Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome to Construction Simulator 2, or to give it its full title, Construction Simulator 2 US Console Edition. It's a bit of a mouthful, we'll just call it Construction Simulator 2. So this is a port of a mobile game, which has been out on Apple and Android for a while now. A uh, sequel to the original game which came out in 2014 and has now been ported across to consoles as the console edition and to PCs as the pocket edition. Uh, it is essentially still a mobile game, just now available to play on a, a bigger format. As you can see, I've already gone ahead and created a profile for myself. And this is simply so I could go in and change the, the volume settings because it is quite loud. <laughs> so. Uh, I had to kind of dial those volumes back a bit so I wasn't completely drowned out. Uh, this is a fun little game. I've played a little bit just to kind of get used to the controls and, and see what it's about before we started doing this series. Uh, and it is a fun little game. And it's cheap as well. It's only eleven ninety nine on the UK store, so I would imagine that translates to around $15 on the US store. Maybe a little bit more. I'm not too sure. But, yeah, only eleven ninety nine on the UK store, which is cheap. It's very cheap, you know. And... Uh, Considering how cheap the game is, it actually plays really well, you know, from what I've played so far. It's a little clunky in a couple of places, as you would expect, um, but visually it looks pretty good, you know, it sounds decent, it handles reasonably well, uh, and I actually quite like this game. So let's jump in and let's get started on building our own construction firm, JBPG Inc. So, uh, it gives you a little bit of a, a, a tiny little intro and then sticks us here at the point where we have to basically learn how to use the controls. So, shows you how to steer, how to accelerate. Very straightforward. Uh, the camera options are a little bit limited. There are a few features on the game that I would like to see that aren't in the game. And we'll kind of go through those as we make our way through. But, uh, it, I say, it looks pretty good. Everything does seem to have... You know, a pretty nice kind of look to it. Everything looks pretty, pretty sharp. You know, detail-wise. You know, it's not the most detailed game that you'll ever see. But again, this is a a mobile game that has been ported across. And when you take all that into consideration, it really does actually look pretty. You know, pretty nice indeed. You know, the backgrounds are nothing amazing, but you know they're functional. They do what they need to do. The vehicles look well modelled. And they look crisp and sharp, and it is chock full of licensed equipment as well. We have Cat, we have Mac, we have Kenworth, uh, we have other brands in here as well that I can't remember off the top of my head. But we have fully licensed brands. And how often have we seen games that are um, sort of startup games or uh, simulation games that do not have licensed equipment that cost two, sometimes three times the price of this, uh, and have quite ugly looking models and unofficial brands or rip-offs of official brands uh, and this nails everything you know right off the bat so yeah I do like what I've seen with this so far and you know I've had some real fun with this and I think this could actually be a quite a good fun game to play and so in terms of uh, kind of controls Pretty straightforward, as you would imagine. We can actually pull those controls up for you there by pressing L3, and it gives you an overlay of the controls themselves. Uh, we have construction view, context menus. We'll go through those as we need to. Uh, you can pull up the mini map at the top of the screen and toggle that by pressing circle and turn that on and off. And you can also use the company menu here, so you can check on any jobs that are available, your current pool of vehicles, uh, a shortcut to the shop, uh, the map, uh, some management, which I haven't figured out yet, haven't got that far. Uh, obviously, your profile settings, the bank, where you can take out a line of credit, um, the game credits, uh, how to change your settings. So if you need to uh, turn that music down, and uh, this is where I've got mine set at the moment for effects and music, because you know, you know, they start with effects fully all the way up, and music, you know, about twice as high as that. 
and it gets quite loud, so I turn those right down. Uh, but you can change your steering sensitivity. You've got a choice of uh, hydraulic controls as well. Uh, when I first tried it, I tried arcade. This time out, I'm going to try the SAE slash Euro controls, see if that makes it a little bit different. Uh, reverse gear changes, uh, release and hold. I'm not quite sure uh, on that. I haven't come to that yet. Financial cycle duration, I've got it set at 60 minutes at the moment. Um, but you can toggle that to 90 minutes or 45 minutes. I'm not really sure what that applies to. I think it maybe applies to loans, perhaps. Uh, or maybe it applies to a day cycle, possibly. Traffic density, you can play with your traffic. Uh, and same with traffic violations. Traffic violations, you can have on or off. So if you crash into something, then you'll get a fine. If you run a red light, you'll get a fine. If you get, uh, If you speed and get caught by a speed camera, you'll get a fine. So you can turn that on or off. Uh, I actually like the fact that those are in there. That's kind of cool, I think. Uh, and then if you see at the bottom of the screen here, on the left-hand side, you can see we've got a D-pad. We have some shortcuts here. So left pulls up the camera options. There are four camera options. Uh, the closest you can get to in-cab is the bumper camera. There is no in-cab view. It's a little bit of a shame, but again, it's a mobile game, so you kind of have to forgive that one. Uh, I'm currently kind of using tracking camera. Uh, you can zoom in and out using L1 and R1 as well. Uh, and then if you press down, it pulls up your list of current vehicles and you can then just switch between the ones that you own and jump straight into that vehicle. Uh, up gives you the ability to shortcut uh, navigation-wise to certain areas that you have unlocked or discovered. And then right brings up the instructions for whatever job you're currently on. So you can see our current instruction is to open the map. And we can do that by pressing touchpad. And this is the first part of our map area. It's not a particularly massive map, but it's a decent size. This is the way we're going to be doing most of our work to start with in this kind of area. We'll probably end up running over to the, the, uh, the gravel pit over here. There's a couple of areas over here. So we've got our training area here. There's an oil rig over here that we'll probably end up doing some stuff with. And you've got other areas up here that are sort of uh, greyed out with fog of war at the moment. When we unlock those, we'll be able to do some jobs over there as well. So we need to set the waypoints to our home base. There we go. And you can skip the drive if you want to. It's not letting us on this particular instance because you know, it wants us to, to you know, learn to navigate. Uh, but once you've kind of got through this little tutorial section, it does allow you to do that. Uh, and as you can see, it's telling us to turn our lights on. So this is where we get to use the context menu, which is square. So you hold that down or press it, and it gives you a list of options. And these vary depending on the vehicle that you're driving and also what it is you're trying to do. Now, obviously, the only option that we have available to us at the moment is headlights, because, again, we're still in tutorial mode. But uh, you basically, you hold the stick in the direction to highlight the block that you're looking for, and then you press square again, and that activates it. And you can see that we have just pat turned our lights on. So it's a very, very cheesy conversation here to skip through. I'm not going to read it because it is appallingly bad. <laughs> it's just one of those horrible video game conversations that is completely unrealistic uh, and not at all what you would, uh, you know, how you would speak to somebody in real life. It's just, it's a cringeworthy conversation. All right, it looks like we need to actually tag that first. There we go. So normally you don't get these checkpoints that pop up like this all the way across the uh, the route. It's just, again, tutorial mode. So normally you just get a marking indicating on the map where you need to head to. And you know one of these little triangles uh, or pyramids, these upside down pyramids, will hover over your target destination. But you don't get them on the route as well. Let's just turn these. Oh, before I turn the uh, side menu off, you can see as well the right hand stick uh, um, on the right hand side next to our speedo shows you the different camera positions and you can see how the stick responds to that. You can actually press R3 and it gets rid of the camera controls because you know there are times when we need to use the right stick for uh, features like the crane on the back of this truck, for example. Uh, so that's how you can switch between you know using your equipment and using the camera just by pressing R3. We're going to clear those off the screen. And you do... <coughs> oh, excuse me. As I say, you do need to be careful of speeding. There are speed cameras dotted around. And uh, if you go too fast, you will get flashed. You will get a fine. They're not huge fines. Usually, you know, a couple of hundred 
uh, credits, but they do add up quickly if you just keep breaking the speed limit. And again, you bump into another car, that's a collision, that's a fine. Uh, you run a red light, that's a, a fine, you know, because again, you're, you're causing a traffic violation. So you do have the option to turn violations on or off. I'm going to keep them on just because you know, <laughs> I have fallen victim to them a few times already. Uh, but it just adds an extra element to the game, and I actually quite enjoy the fact that they're in there. Again, got to be careful not to run the red light. Uh, there's no horn, there's no indicators. Um, bit of a shame. Some vehicles do have beacons, some don't, and you can turn those on manually. So it's not incredibly in-depth, but as I say, again, you have to remember that this is a mobile game that has been ported across. So uh, it's not a full-on PC level uh, simulation. Something like Farming Simulator, for example, uh, is a very in-depth simulator with a lot of options. This is not that. This would be more akin, I would say, to perhaps Farming Sim 18. I have not played Farming Sim 18, but in terms of features and functions, I would probably put it a bit more... On the, on the 18 version, because it's, as I say, it's a mobile game that's been ported over. But, you know, for what it is, it looks and plays very, very well, and I've had a lot of fun with it, and it's cheap. That's the important thing. So this is our home base. We have completed that phase of the tutorial, and we're going to get our first job now. So we need to head to the store, and we can choose to just go OK and then make our way there manually, or we can set a waypoint with Circle. And you can see on the little mini-map, it's put on that sort of yellow icon to indicate where we need to go. And where we need to go is literally just across the street. There is the blue diamond, or blue upside down uh, pyramid there to indicate where we need to go. Uh, I do like the way that the hazard lights... Uh, and, uh, and warning lights do come on automatically when you reverse, along with the beep, beep, beep uh, for this vehicle is reversing. It's a nice touch. It's, a, it's just a shame that you can't manually toggle hazards um, or you can't use indicators. And, and there's no horn either, which I'm a little disappointed by, I have to say. You want to be able to honk the horn. And here we are at the dealership. So, I'm just going to move the truck out of the entranceway, just because that's the courteous thing to do. So to get into the dealership, you can see we've got the prompt at the bottom. You actually need to hold the button down. There we go. And then from here, we've got uh, an information box, which, again, is blocked off at the moment because we're still kind of in tutorial mode. Uh, and we need to enter the dealership. So we press square once it's highlighted. Uh, by the backhoe. Select the options button and then vi press purchase. After purchase, leave the vehicle dealer pressing circle. So here is our backhoe, the CAT F uh, 430F2 backhoe. And uh, we are being given this for free, which is very, very nice. Do we want to buy this for free? Yes, please. There we go. We have picked up a free backhoe. So now we're going to use the uh, vehicle tab here to switch to the backhoe and it's off to go to our first job uh, the client's drain pipe is broken and we need to fix it I've marked the construction site on the map for you so if we pull up the map you can see it's already been toggled for us that's where we need to go and it's literally it's not not far it's just down the road so let's uh, get ourselves underway again with some vehicles as I say you can toggle the beacons there we go let's see can we get through the lights before they change yes we can oh <laughs> nearly got a first fine there for crashing into another vehicle Stop here at the reds. And you can just see the icon ahead of us flashing to indicate where we need to stop. And 
And here we go. This is where we need to be. So park the backhoe backwards exactly in the marked area. Some of the lights on this are very bright indeed. And the camera does this thing which is a little awkward to get used to where it automatically pivots, you know, um, depending on the direction that you're doing. So if I just press reverse, it automatically spins around. And again, if I press the forward button a little bit, it automatically spins forward. You know, it's it takes a bit of getting used to it. I kind of like to have manual, full manual control over the camera. So that is a little awkward, but it is what it is. So we need to put the uh, backhoe into function mode. So we're going to highlight that, press square. This basically pushes the bucket down and puts the rear supports up. And now it lifts the vehicle off the ground. Uh, and now we need to use the left stick to rotate the boom. And then the right stick, once we press it, because we're currently on camera mode, as if you can see here, we're currently on camera mode. If I press the right stick, it removes the camera controls and now replaces them with crane controls, as you can see. So basically what we need to do, I need to put the camera into position where I can see what I'm doing properly, first of all. Zoom in a bit. There we go. What we need to do is we need to dig out this bit of ground here and then dump it in between the cones. So, uh, let's start digging. Uh, it takes a moment to get used to the controls. And I'm having to readjust again because I just about started getting used to uh, the controls that I was using previously and now I've gone to a different control type for this and uh, I'm, I'm having to re relearn them again or get used to them again. But what I do love about this game is how simplistic you know it can be and yet how well they do things like this deformable terrain. Uh, I really do like this. And I'm going to keep harping on about it as we make our way through this game. You have to keep remembering this is a mobile game. This is not a full, you know, you know, PC or or uh, you know, full simulation release. This is just a mobile game that's been ported over, uh, so it doesn't have all of those bells and whistles and features that the big simulators do. But what it does do is it does it very, very well indeed. I'm very impressed. So we just need to do a few more scoops, a few more shovels. And once we've done enough, it'll automatically clear out the rest. And you can see we have a, a little icon on the ground that kind of indicates where our bucket is at all times, which is a really helpful little tool, especially when you're trying to load things with the crane as well. Sometimes it's quite tricky to tell exactly where things are, and that little icon, that little white circle, just really helps to clear that up for you. So you get a clear indication of where the bucket is going to go into the ground, and... Uh, and where the soil is going to go when you empty it. There we go. I think one more bucket hopefully should do it. No, maybe not. Maybe we need a little bit more. There we go. Task complete. So we need to clear the area. Let's just dump this bit of dirt just there. There we go. And by clearing the area, we just need to move the bucket out of the way of the pipe, essentially. So to remove the drain pipe, use the back hose bucket. Hook the pipe and using the X button. So I'm just going to swing the camera around to the other side now. There we go. 
So once again, I want to bring this down. And we're going to hook by pressing X. Set the drain pipe down in the highlighted area. You can detach your cargo by pressing X again. So let's get this bucket up. And we'll rotate this around. And you can also hold down circle and then use the right stick to rotate the angle of the cargo. Like that, which is really helpful. And of course you can do that in either direction that you want to. There we go. It just needs to be in the area. It doesn't need to be perfect. So we'll just drop that there. Press X to unload. Task is complete. And we've got a nice little payout there. Two grand. Very nice. Now we need to buy some new drain pipes. You can buy them at the building materials supplier. Take the flatbed to get there. So we're going to uh, shortcut to the flatbed and drive over to the materials supplier. Now, I know where this is, but again, it's, it's been pre-marked on the map for us. I'm just going to turn our lights off because it's daytime. We don't need those on anymore. Oh, and we've just tagged the bank, which is next door. So now we've unlocked the location of bank. So that we can come here and take out a line of credit, apparently. I've not tried doing that yet, so we'll probably look at doing that soon. Because we are going to need to increase uh, the amount of vehicles we have on our fleet. At the moment, we just have the two. There are other vehicles we're going to need, depending on the job that we want to do. Let me just see as well if I can change the camera a bit. It pauses everything instantly the second you pull up one of the camera options or something like that. So we have a tracking camera. I'm going to try a static orbit camera and see if that will stay where I position it. And it looks as though it will. So now if I hit reverse, oh, I'm in the wrong lane. You see we've got uh, red lights ahead there. This is the Builder's Yard. And there's our loading area around the back. So if I hit reverse, I should. I'm just guessing. Yeah, it's not flipping the camera. So the static camera gives you that kind of manual control that we're kind of used to with things like Farming Sim where the camera stays locked in whatever position you put it in, which I prefer. And you can still zoom in and out, as you can see, so... Right, here we are then. Press and hold X when you're in the uh, building material supplier's site to open the buy menu, then buy one pallet of pipes. So we're in, let's enter. And we need to find the pipes which are highlighted in yellow for us. You can see some of these materials are 10% off. So theoretically, if you wanted to buy some materials and keep them in stock, then you could do that. This is what we do need, though. Pallet of pipes. You can see it's got the little highlight there, uh, with the little box with the one in yellow. And we want to buy one of those. So we'll press right on the D-pad to buy one pallet. And uh, X to pull up the options. And we can have it delivered to our construction site, delivered to our warehouse. Uh, or we can go straight to auto load um, or we can just go to go uh, which will dump it outside and then we have to manually load it now that's the only option currently available to us but as we progress through those other ones will become available so we bought that now we need to back out and there is our pallet of pipes so we need to manually load that so let's get the truck in position Uh, 
There we go. And now we get to play around with our uh, our crane. So we need to put the truck into uh, function mode. Pulls out the hydraulic supports. There we go. And now we use the left stick to control our crane. There we go. So this is essentially what we've just done with the bucket, but using an actual proper hook this time. Uh, we need to secure our load onto the back of the truck and then tie it down, strap it down. There we go. And once you get into that kind of little yellow hook icon that floats above whatever it is you're trying to, to, to uh, connect to, it will give you the prompt to then hook it. Like so. Now we need to get this lifted and onto our truck. And once you get it onto the truck, you can see it'll auto kind of load it in a certain point, where, you know, wherever you're, you're trying to drop it. So we'll just unload it there. And there we go, that's loaded. So we need to secure this now, so back into the functions menu. We need to secure the load, and that straps it down. And that will strap down anything that's on the back of the truck. So if you have multiple items, you don't have to strap everything down individually. You strap them all, or you unstrap them all. Pretty simple. Uh, and now we need to reset the vehicle. And that folds the, the crane back up. Now we need to go back into driving mode. So again, back into the function menu with square. Select driving mode. And that retracts the hydraulic supports and gives us you know driving control of our truck again. So now we're off to deliver the pipes to our construction site where we're working. Just checking for traffic, nothing coming, good. We'll turn here. Oh, we ran a red light. I thought we were okay there, but apparently we ran a red light, so we just got fined 150 credits. Just kind of hoping to avoid making mistakes like that so early on, but never mind. <laughs> These things happen. And what we need to do is park the truck in between the cones. That's our indicated parking area. This is so that we can drop the, uh, the pipes off. This is on the wrong camera again, isn't it? Yeah, I want the static orbit camera. There we go. This is so that we can drop the pipes off within reach of our uh, backhoe. So once again, into the function menu, we need to enter function mode. There's the little yellow box there. You can see that's where we're trying to unload the pipes into. We need to untie our pipes. There we go. Uh, and now uh, we need to release the crane. I probably should have done this in reverse actually. Never mind. We'll try and do it like this. See if we can. We can extend the, the, uh, the length of the crane. It does actually stretch out quite a way which is pretty good. So again, we're just trying to tag that hook icon there, like so. And this is the telescopic range that we have. It's pretty good, as you can see. We really can get quite high with that. Uh, I'm actually a little bit too... too far forward there we go that should do so we'll unload those there and if you try and unload them too high then uh, it will um, say that you're too high off the ground or you're too high off the truck to be able to unload at this point and you have to get lower down so it does give you kind of warnings like that uh, once again we need to sort out the flatbed so we can 
go location quit select and go back to home base and this takes the, the vehicle that we are in back to home base like that so there we go nice and done now we need to switch back to the backhoe so we can finish this job off so let's lower this down hook the pipe and you can see there's a blue icon there to suggest where we need to drop that pipe in Uh, so I'm going to rotate the pipe. And it should turn green, that little blue area that we've got, that little gap. It should turn green once we've got the pipe in the right location. There we go. So we unload. Fantastic. And we need to reset the vehicle. So that's folded the crane back up. And now we need to go back to... Uh, it didn't trigger. There we go. Now we have to fill the soil back in again. So we're going to do this with the, uh, the bucket on the front. So we need to go to driving mode. So unfold the vehicle again. There we go. And again, with camera controls... We need to toggle between the camera controls and the actual manual controls of the uh, of the wheel loader. So uh, if I just pull up the camera menu there, you can see we're on camera controls at the moment. And now if I press R3, we're now onto manual movement controls for the wheel loader. So we can change the angle of the bucket and so on and so forth. The camera's actually not in a very good position right now, so... Let's go to static orbit. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. There we go. Uh, and now we'll switch back. So we want to scoop up the bucket. And we basically just want to refill the hole. Like that. There we go. Nice and simple. Task completed. Very good. To finish the job, you only have to clear the construction site. You better bring the backhoe directly back to base. So we could drive away, or we could do what they're suggesting and shortcut back to home base, which is what we'll do. And there we go. Uh, it's going to turn the beacons off. Uh, press options to open the company menu. Uh, this is the company menu. From here, you can manage your company. You have the option to take on new jobs, expand your abilities, inspect your garage, your vehicles, change the game options, and much more. When you get the chance, you should check it out and explore all the options. On the bottom right, you'll find a brief explanation for navigation within the menus. And there we go. That is the end of day one. We now know how to manually operate our machines. It's time for us to go ahead and make some money. And again, it's a terrible conversation, so I'm just going to skip through it because it's really badly written, as they always are in video games. And we're at level one. We're still flabbergasted, but we're at level one. Challenge mastered. So in home base, you can see we've got uh, a little forklift that we can use as well. And this is if we want to uh, move around any equipment that we have delivered here. Uh, we don't have one, so we'll just kind of leave that there. So that'll go back into the warehouse. Right, uh, from here, we need to basically take on a new job. So you can see here we have the option to uh, look for new contracts here, uh, do some tutorials if we want to. There are no special jobs available for us at this, at this stage, so we've got two kind of choices. We are going to go into contracts, but we're going to do that next time. We're going to keep these episodes reasonably short, uh, so we're going to end it here, uh, and I will be back with some more Construction Simulator 2 very soon.